I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands upon which we meet today. I would also like to pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. For those of you that I have not yet met, my name is Adam Boyton and I am the Interim National Skills Commissioner. While it would have been great to meet with you all in person, it's amazing that we have technology available today that lets us come together like this virtually. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to speak about the work of the National Skills Commission, how it can help make Australia's VET system stronger and also support Australia's economic recovery from COVID-19. The concept of a National Skills Commission was first raised by Stephen Joyce in his March 2019 review of Australia's vocational education and training system. As part of the 2019-20 federal budget, the National Skills Commission was announced as part of a broader package, delivering skills for today and tomorrow, aimed at strengthening and simplifying the vocational education and training sector. To make sure that the National Skills Commission delivers what the sector needs, we undertook an extensive co-design process with over 500 people from all parts of the skills and labour market sector. That co-design process extended from the major capitals to the regions. I attended workshops in Sydney, Karratha and Darwin. The sentiment was clear. The sector wants a strong, independent voice, not just for the vocational education and training system, but for the whole labour market. To provide robust analysis on Australia's current skills needs and those that we are likely to need in the future. To give effect to that, the government has introduced into the parliament the National Skills Commissioner Bill. This bill establishes the role of the National Skills Commissioner as an independent statutory office holder to provide advice and analysis on Australia's current, emerging and future workforce needs, the development of efficient prices for VET courses, the public and private return on government investment in VET qualifications, the performance of Australia's VET system, and issues affecting the state of the Australian and international labour markets. Finally, opportunities to improve access, skills development and choice for regional, rural and remote Australia in relation to VET. Today, I want to speak with you about the role the National Skills Commission will play in helping to simplify and strengthen our VET system. I also want to address the impact COVID-19 has had on the labour market and the work the National Skills Commission already has underway to fulfil our remit. Turning first to the labour market, the latest available Australian Bureau of Statistics data show employment fell by over 225,000 in May. That followed a decline of over 600,000 in April, with that fall in April being the largest monthly decline on record. The working age employment to population ratio fell by 1.3 percentage points in May to 69.8%. That's the lowest rate recorded since July 2003. Since March 2020, prior to the shutdown of non-essential services and the introduction of restrictions, the working age employment to population ratio has fallen by 4.7 percentage points. The unemployment rate has of course risen over the past few months. It rose by 0.7 percentage points in May to 7.1 per cent. That's the highest rate recorded since October 2001. And it's well above the 5.2 per cent we saw in March this year. Now the significant declines in employment in April and May have not translated into a similar increase in the unemployment rate because a large number of people have left the labour force. That's seen the participation rate fall to the lowest level recorded since January 2001. The ABS has advised that if the people that have left the labour force over the past two months had actually moved into unemployment, then the unemployment rate would in fact be 11.3% in May 2020. So clearly, the impact on the labour market has been enormous. That said, there are now some early, albeit tentative, signs of stabilisation. For example, while the amount of hours worked across the economy did fall in May, the decline was relatively small and followed a large drop in April. Indeed, it's quite plausible that hours worked across the economy will rise in June. Similarly, the National Skills Commission's survey of employers 
is showing an increase in the number of employers looking to hire. And various measures of job vacancies, including those compiled by the National Skills Commission, have started to show an uptick, albeit from very low levels over recent weeks. However, it is still very early days. The dramatic change in the nature of the labour market has also meant a significant change in some of the National Skills Commission's work. At the start of the year, the unemployment rate was low and labour market research in the skills space was heavily focused on identifying skills shortages. The data I've just run through underscores just how quickly that changed. And looking ahead, it could be a while before our labour market returns to the conditions we saw at the start of this year. To support economic recovery, we need to understand what's happening in the labour market, the structural shifts that have occurred, those that will occur, and what skilling and retraining support our workforce needs to prosper. Already we have seen, using the ABS's weekly payroll wages and jobs in Australia report, that the labour market underwent significant structural shifts in a very short period because of COVID-19 and related restrictions. As an example, the share of employee jobs accounted for by the healthcare and social assistance industry, the finance and insurance services industry, the professional scientific and technical services industry, and manufacturing all increased. All of these sectors saw an increase in their share of employment. In contrast, the share of jobs accounted for by the accommodation and food services industry fell significantly. This was also seen in arts and recreation services and administrative and support services. Could I just stop at this point and acknowledge the work of the Bureau of Statistics in so rapidly bringing together so many different and new data sources over the past few months, the data I've just mentioned being a case in point. Having this data has been enormously helpful in enabling us to work out what's happening in the labour market. As the economy recovers and businesses start hiring again, we need to make sure that they can find people with the right skills. We don't want a mismatch between what businesses want and the skills people have being a handbrake on the recovery. This is where the National Skills Commission can support recovery. Our aim is to develop robust intelligence on Australia's labour market, our workforce and current and emerging skills needs. We will use both traditional and new data sources and techniques, big data and machine learning approaches, as well as more traditional economic and skills analysis. Ultimately, the Commission will publish an annual report setting out the skills needs of Australia. Of course, there is a huge challenge and a huge task in front of us, something that needs to be tackled right now. One way we are already doing this is by surveying employers about jobs in demand and future staffing expectations. We are also publishing the results of these surveys in a jobs in demand dashboard. Each week we're updating jobs in demand at a local level on Jobs Hub, linking job seekers to vacancies as well as showing skills in demand. We're also undertaking CGE modelling work to examine the likely state of the labour market over the next year or so. This work is designed to provide a rich and nuanced picture of the impact of COVID-19 and recovery across regions, occupations and demographic groups. Over the rest of 2020, the National Skills Commission will look to release reports that outline the likely skills needs of the economy as we continue to recover from COVID-19. To recap, the labour market has experienced major disruption and while signs of recovery are emerging, uncertainty remains around when demand will pick up and what jobs will be most in demand. Matching workers to jobs in this uncertain and evolving environment will require the ability to quickly identify skills needs and retrain people for jobs that are in demand. More than ever, the focus on reskilling and skilling with displaced workers will be essential to the recovery of the jobs market and our economy. Improved efforts on job matching and connecting job seekers with job opportunities through an increased focus on skills transferability and mid-career change will also help people get back into jobs. Identifying training options that can link to a variety of jobs provides a degree of insurance against uncertainty during such periods of rapid labour market change. 
and machine learning techniques, such as those used by the Jobs and Education Data Infrastructure, JEDI, project make this sort of analysis possible. These techniques can also identify additional new training needed to open up new employment options for people seeking new jobs, to identify pathways to new employment opportunities that take advantage of a job seeker's existing skills. JEDI is a flagship project that will deliver world-leading intelligence on skills needs. By harnessing the best and widest range of labour market, skills and education data available, JEDI can identify what skills from a person's current or previous employment can transfer to different jobs that use similar skills. It also identifies skill gaps between the different jobs recommended before showing VET courses that are available to fill the gap. Using data science, JEDI is pioneering a new approach to skills-based labour market analysis. Analysis that is helping people planning their career and exploring study options, businesses looking at their workforce plan, training providers designing courses. JEDI also provides a single comprehensive source of up-to-date information, enabling the National Skills Commission to provide relevant, timely and accessible information to better understand the needs of a changing economy. While JEDI can help us understand the needs of a changing economy, a stronger and simpler VET system will help us meet those needs. So I wanted to speak briefly about the role of the National Skills Commission in helping to make our vocational education and training system stronger. Of course, the starting point is we have a good VET system, we have a strong VET system, but there is always room for improvement. As highlighted in the Prime Minister's recent press club address, the system can be complex and unresponsive, especially for those who need it the most, students. There are over 1,400 courses and almost 17,000 units of competency, many leading to the same career path. Imagine how overwhelming it can be for students to navigate all of those options, often without having clear visibility on employment outcomes that are attached to different qualifications. And of course, all of this comes with a range of different prices. As you know, currently VET prices and subsidies vary considerably around Australia, with students paying different prices for the same course. To help address some of these issues, the explanatory memorandum for the National Skills Commissioner Bill notes that the Commissioner would develop and maintain a set of efficient prices for VET courses. The Commissioner would examine the cost drivers for courses, the different public and private returns, and develop a list of efficient prices for courses. Core to this is a consideration of quality. Efficient price does not mean the lowest price. Rather, it means the price that needs to be paid to secure training that delivers students with the skills employers needs and sets students up for a valuable career. I really want to focus on that last point. An efficient price is not the lowest price. It's the price that provides the quality outcome we are after. Ultimately, all of this work is about improving confidence in the system, particularly from the perspective of students. This brings me to the ongoing partnership between the NSC and the National Careers Institute. Our data and analysis can help reassure students they are making the right decisions for their career, enabling students so they can find information about courses and future career prospects with ease, helping them to make better informed decisions about their future. Ultimately, to my mind, the real value of the National Skills Commission comes from the interlinkage of all of these elements, linking price and quality thinking about the outcomes of the VET system with reference to the labour market, and thinking holistically about skill needs, training, quality, pricing and outcomes, bringing all of that together and making sure we communicate that effectively to students, providers, and testing our thinking and analysis with a wide range of stakeholders. The NSC has come into being at a critical time. Late last year, when stakeholders were invited to co-design the National Skills Commission, there was an overwhelming call for an independent national body to help revitalise the skills sector, to provide new leadership on skills and workforce development to meet the needs of Australia's economy. Of course, none of us could have anticipated just how radically different the economic landscape would be just six months later. While much of the discussion then focused on skills gaps and skills shortages, we are now instead needing to think about how we manage skills surpluses 
and retraining options for unemployed workers as we deal with our first recession in nearly 30 years. This is, of course, just the start of the NSC's journey. As the National Skills Commission moves forward and as we harness the power of data and introduce new and innovative ways of analysing it, we need you to be there with us on this journey. The insights from those directly connected with the VET sector, whether they be training providers, students, industry groups or businesses, will provide great value to the work of the National Skills Commission. All of the NSC's work has economic benefits. Our work has the potential to lift employment, to lift productivity and to get people into real and meaningful jobs. But ultimately, the great promise of education is the promise of the equality of opportunity. And vocational education and training plays an incredibly important role there. And the National Skills Commission would like to play a role in ensuring the VET system can really deliver that equality of opportunity to every student that goes through it. I look forward to continuing to work together to build an NSC that becomes an enduring part of Australia's skills and economic infrastructure through both the recovery period and well into the future. Thank you.